PSG in their traditional royal blue colours defending with a 5-1 to start off with today with Benoit Konku standing out on top and looking to get in the face of Eric Johansson in the centre at the moment and Tobias Grandol will fill in there in a few seconds time with this empty switch played out to Moen in the right back position Grandol, Moen Cross to Johansson, back into Stig Toramon, has a look around, lays it off to Johansson with a tight angle there, and the shot is saved, but the rebound picked up nicely by Sindra Heldol. Bounce pass across, and they'll set up again with Kasper Lien out in the right wing, helping out there. In on the line, Andre Longos for Elvrum. Not the tallest line player, but he's got a very good shooting hand and good movement as well off the ball. It's going to be important today. That shot a bit wild and over the top by Moen. And away come PSG. Nice pass. Oh, gorgeous little move. And it's put away by Adama Kaita for the first goal of the game. That was nicely done by Henrik Toft. Drawing in the defenders and laying that ball off to Kaita. Ball into the line to Longos is free, and he places that one past Jan Jonti. 1-1. Luke Zines looking to tease this Elvrum defense for the first time today. Really looking forward to this battle between Luke Steins and Tobias Grundl. Two thrilling playmakers who are among the fastest in the game. For the first settled attack for PSG, we see that Nikola Karabatic is starting in the left-back position. Ball into the lines, Camille Shipjack through the hands of the keeper. And that's a lead back PSG's way. Nicholas Vingren lays it off to Mo, and they're looking to push the pace themselves here. Elverum sticking to what they believe in, and that's good to see as well. A little shove on Eric Johansson just gives a yellow card to Nadim Remili. Elverum not afraid to push the pace here, which can be a dangerous mix with this youth and the opposition they're facing. They know also when to control the pace, slow things down. Moen, Grundahl lays it off to Johansson, gets it back off again. Longos looking to help out on the line. Moen on the switch, another high challenge. Could be a two-minute suspension this time. Let's see what the referees say. It is indeed. Two-minute suspension to Benoit Konku. As you can see, just a bit too high around the shoulder and the neck of the attacker. And stick to Ramon, giving PSG something to think about here in these opening minutes. Really pushing the pace and coming across the face of the defenders as well. It can be really tricky if they're left flat-footed. And now a decent opportunity in a six-on-five situation for Elvara. Ball across, into the line, space again, and into the bottom right-hand corner. Andre Longos. Nice move again, sets it up for Longos, and jean -T comes flying out, but nothing he can do about that. So much time, he knew where he was going to place it past the keeper. Two for Longos, two for Elvara. 2-2. Remili lays it back to Steins, out to the wing. Not much of an angle there, but it matters not to Ferran Soleil. Managed to tease the keeper out off his line and place it past him to give PSG the lead. Had a bit more space than he needed, I think, in the end. Up. Save by Janty and the rebound slips out of the hands of Casper Lien. While you were watching that replay, I believe Eric Johansson fired in a shot from the left back position. Well stopped. The first big stop of the day for Jan Janty. Here's the replay of it. Uh, maybe rushing it a little bit considering they are a man up in that situation. So it's Nikola Karabatic in the center. Line switch brings Luke Steins back into the middle. Remili looking to draw in the defenders and lay it off. Here he is in the center now. Ball into Shipshack. And that's a penalty. And a two-minute suspension dished out at the other end as well. Looked a bit harsh, that one. 
on Eric Johansson. Not too much in that. Kamil Shipshak riding the challenge. And nevertheless, two minute suspension given to Eric Johansson. And the penalty to be taken by Kamil Shipshak. That's not something you see every day. Interesting. Now that Miguel Hansen is not here. Shipshak, the man on the seven meter line, save! And kept in play. Nice stop by Emil Imsgaard. Well, that might be the last time we see Shipchak take a penalty. But full credit to Emil Imsgaard. Read the arm well. And a lot of appreciation coming in for that save. Elvram now a man down in the attack. Keeper is off to even up the odds, six on six. So they have to be careful. That shot doesn't help over the top again. It was a decent shooting opportunity, but didn't quite come out of that left arm properly. Ball behind the back into the wing and has to be recycled here. Steins looking to get things motoring again, but deciding against rushing things, slows it down, allows Shipchak to come in on the line. Little one-two, back in to Stein. Space on the right-hand side, but the pass behind the back is no good. An attacker foul called anyway against Nadim Ramali. Caught between two minds there is what to do. And Elvram get away with that one. So the penalty saved and an attacker foul. So Elvram will not be punished at all for that two-minute suspension. Or Eric Johansson. Niklas Fingren, who's used more in the defense out in the left back position at the moment. Uh, Sandra Heldahl comes in from the left wing to help out, goes as second line player. Fingren tries to beat his man, lays it off to Moen. What can he do this time? Lays it off to Grundahl. Moen having a look around, in a bit of trouble here, needs the outlet pass. Goes to Grundahl, shot's going to have to come in here. Moen still trying to go alone, and in the end, shoots with his right hand. The last thing you want to see a left-hander do. Uh, getting a bit stuck in the mud there, Elvram. We go again. Shot down low. Not a bad idea by Grundahl, but it was wide to the left. And away come PSG again with Luke Stein taking over the halfway line. Ball out to the right wing. That's good movement and a good finish as well by Benoit Kunku. And PSG take a two-goal lead for the first time today. That's how dangerous they can be. And it wasn't like... Elevrum was slow in getting back. They just didn't stop the wave of counter-attack coming from PSG. Heldahl back in. He'll make his way out to the left wing. Grundahl, Moen. Grundahl again, looking for space. Not much to play with at the moment. And Moen getting stuck in between taking a shot and trying to beat the man. In the end, wins the free throw. Bit of a frustrating seven and a half minutes to start this one for Moen. Hopefully he'll have a chance to settle in and get a shot away here. Hand up for passive play again. He just tried to get the shot away and the shooting arm was taken away. This time on the verge of legality from Benoit Konku. So we see Dominic Mathe there watching from the sideline. Oh, gorgeous pass into the line and a good finish as well. And all three goals coming from the line for Alvarum. Can they change that now with a chance to break? Fingre needs to lay it off. It's a bit slow to Johansson. Opportunity on the right-hand side if they get the ball moving. Fingre cuts out to the left again, trying to force things to happen. And in the end, runs into the defender, attacking foul. Karabadish takes it over the halfway line. Uh, he tries to lay it off, and it's stolen back. Good defending. Eric Johansson just got a touch on it. And a few moments of hectic play at either end, as we see the replay of Andre Longos's third goal of the game. Three from three for him. And that clearly the best approach for Elvram at the moment, but you'll get the feeling that PSG will try to shut that down sooner rather than later. Grundahl, Johansson, back to Moen. That's much better. Big Tora Moen with his first goal of the game. 
Three attempts for him, two of them went over the top. This time, puts it in the back of the net, and it's 4-4. Ball slips out of the hands of Toft Hansen, and away come Elverum again. Fingrain looking for the pass. Moen again, he's got space. Ah, and he shoots that one off the far post. A bit of luck there for PSG, who come flying back at them. This game completely relentless as we see another save at the near post by Emil Insgaard. <laughs> I'm just looking down at the sideline here as uh, some of the Elverum players are coming off. They're out of breath already. They may be one of the youngest teams in this competition, but Stig Tormoen needs a moment to uh, gather his breath. This game being played at a rate of knots. And as we pass the 10 minute mark here, it's exactly what the neutrals will want to see 4 4. Heldol coming back in momentarily from the left wing, then makes his way back out again. Grundol, space there on the right hand side, but Johansson decides to break through himself. Grundol trying to create opportunities here, not trying to force the issue too much, which is a smart approach. His gaps will appear as the game goes on. So far, Managing things pretty well in the center of that Elvrum attack. Lays it back to Moen. And a pass across into nobody in the end. Not even the crowd caught that one. Uh, maybe the bit of tiredness there by Stigtor Moen showing as he's really given his all into these opening 11 minutes of the game. Perhaps a change in coming in the backcourt. But in the meantime, it's PSG back in the attack. Steins has a look up, leaves it off to Karabatic. Steins, they're waiting on the left-hand side there, but the pass from Karabatic goes to the wrong man. He's saved by the referee's whistle. Steins again. Oh, gorgeous move by Luke Steins. Dances through the center of that Elvrum defense. He'll be used to facing players like that, so no real excuse there. But Luke Steins is in a class of his own sometimes, particularly when it comes to jinking in between players on and off balance. Well, he's never really off balance, though, is he? Grundahl comes back in, has a word with his line. Player has a word with his teammates. He calls for the empty switch, barking out the instructions here. So it's Johansson in the center. Konku stepping out in the 5-1, looking to get involved. He hasn't had too much joy against Grundahl so far, but at the same time, Grundahl hasn't tried to force the issue. But playing into the line has been good this time. Saved in the bottom right by Jan Janty. And a chance here for PSG to break. Karabatic ball out to the right wing. That's a much better pass this time through the legs of the keeper. And Benoit Konku. Gets himself another one and gives PSG a 6-4 lead. Really nice work again, but this time the shot from Longos just not up to the standard required. And a good finish at the other end. Konku showing him how it's done. Ball out to Moen. Johansson. Johansson, nice breakthrough there and really gives nobody, neither the defenders nor the goalkeepers, a chance to react to that one. He's gone before they notice. And a bit of a rush shot there by Nedim Remili. Perhaps a bit of frustration or trying to catch Imsgard off guard. No dice as he makes the save. And Elhurum with a chance to draw level again. Bordelon watches on. He's making a lot of changes between attack and defense at the moment. A lot of instructions being given out by the former Champions League winner with Kiel back in the day, 12 years ago. So he knows how to win it, at least as a player. He's done a fantastic job with this team as the coach. Moen. All across to Fingren. Looking for the pass into the line. It gets there eventually. That's much better. And it's again Andre Longos. Goal number four for him today. One of the unexpected top scorers, I think, in this game so far, far Andre Longos. But a lot of space for him to work with again, and the danger clearly in the eyes of the PSG defense is in the backcourt. So they're stepping out early, leaving the space behind them and beside them. That's a nice stop, really well done. And on that occasion, 
Here's Josip Davidovic being used primarily in defense. Does play a bit of attack in the playmaker position. He scored a couple of goals this season, but it's really all been about Tobias Grundahl in the center of the Elverum attack. In comes Heldahl again. Grundahl almost at his halfway line. Receives it back. Keeping the ball moving here, and that's a poor pass and stolen by Nadim Remili. He's in acres of space here. And leaves the keeper stranded as he fires that one into the bottom left-hand corner. And again, nicely set up by Elverum, but the incisive pass cross-court was just left a little bit too obvious in the end as the playmaker wasn't there. There was only one pass on, and Remili saw that. And he was out like a flash to make the steal and score the goal. And he's almost done it again. This time flying out in front of the Grundahl pass. Can only knock it out of play, though. And we're a quarter of the way through this first leg. That's quite a contest we have on our hands. Another ball into the line and into the bottom left-hand corner. It's the same formula, different player this time. Thomas Solsta. Placing that one past the keeper and drawing Elverum a level. Five goals coming from the line for them today so far. Steins, nice finish. He regained his composure there, didn't force anything to happen. And then just created a space for himself, placed it past the keeper. The worrying signs for PSG in terms of the defense against the line. They're managing the backcourt players fairly well. And just a few too many gaps in the center there once they come out. And you have to give credit to Elverum as well and the way they're playing in attack, the speed of movement as well from the line players. Grundahl tries to find the line again. This time it's batted away and PSG take it over the halfway line. Karabadic has space down the center. He goes alone. Good save with the right arm. Emil Imsgaard. Lindgren takes it over the halfway line himself. There's an overlap on the right-hand side, but an attacking foul call against Dick Tormo, and that's harsh. A really unfortunate, huge space on the right-hand side. He did everything right, just a little bit of contact. There was a previous pass into the line for Thomas Solsta to score his first of the day. So everything the fans could have wanted from this game being delivered so far. And almost the entire arena on that side on their feet. Really enjoying this contest so far and doing what they can to get into PSG's head. Raul Gonzalez not looking too comfortable so far. On paper, probably seen as one of the bigger mismatches. And that's what you get when you have PSG finishing in third place in what was a brutal Group B. And Elverum finishing sixth in Group A. Good pass into Shipshack. Nice turn on a half fence. And he uh, fired that one past the keeper to make it a two goal lead again. Second goal of the day for Shipshack. His one miss coming from the penalty line. And that one from Moen again. Just not clicking for him today. He's had some good moments, but overall, I'd be hoping and expecting a lot more. The opportunities have come. The space has been there for him on the right-hand side. But couldn't find the back of the net there. Dinus Christophans coming on in the right-back position. Prandi at left-back, number 71. That's another nice pass into the line. And, well, just like Elvrum are doing at one side, PSG beginning to do at the other end. And Camille Shipshack with two in a row. Just being caught a bit flat-footed there, Nicholas Fingren. As Shipshack ghosted behind him. Difficult man to ghost people. He's a big, big player. And well, there's the biggest of them all. Danis Christopans. Grandol to Moen. Tries to go one way than the other, but he's held up by Grandi. Back in the EHF Champions League for the first time this year. Good to see him back as well. Desperately needed for this PSG side now that they don't have Miguel Hansen. 
Hand up for passive play. Moen, Grundle, cuts one way, then the other. Gonna have to do something here soon. Ball into the line and a, well, a one-sided wrestling match there between Thomas Solstad and uh, Dennis Christopans, who was pleading his innocence. Yellow card for him, but nothing more than that. And it looks like the Elverum bench getting ready to call a timeout here. And not a bad call whatsoever. Grundle, finger in. Moen tries to beat his man again into the line. Good movement by Solstad. Bounces that one through the keeper. And it's another one from the line. It's phenomenal stuff. Six out of Elverum's eight goals so far coming from the line position. Goal number two for Thomas Solstad. Four before that from Andre Longos. Well, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Christopans, ball out to the wing, has to be recycled. Steins, Christopans again, lays it off to Prondi. A bit of space here for Dennis Christopans, but he's held up well, and a penalty called for inside defending and taking the arm. Uh, not much inside defending there, but taking the arm in a shooting position. And it's Camille Shipjack who'll take it again. Well, he missed first time around, but really trying to cement his place as the penalty taker here. This time he makes no mistake. Sends Imsgard the wrong way. Places it into the top right-hand corner, and he's delighted with himself for that. And with that, it's the first time out of the day. Taken by Bergelund and Elverum. Let's listen in. Vi prøver med et par lørdespill, hvor vi spiller flensburg kant. Vi spiller den på slik si side. Det vender på seg Thomas Pinta, og så går du like etterpå. Så det spiller sitt forsøk kant? Ja, så Erik får den i situasjonen, du får den igjen. Thomas blir der, han er i hjørnet, han går blindt. Da må du se om han får han i drag i bak, eller om du får den situasjonen. Fortsett med Aalborg-spillet. Fortsett også med ISO. Når vi spiller ISO, prøv å touche det med livet hvis han skal høyt opp. Etterpå, når du går, så kan du krysse både stig, og du kan komme blindt inn. På ikke rett? På Aalborg, kryss ISO. Den veien. Alright? Bakover. Fortsett på kort og løft opp. Den som får sidebekken som satser høyere opp, vi har kontroll en mot en. Well, a very calm and composed time out there by Bergelund. Setting up the attack, setting up what he wanted to see from Grundle and his teammates. And this is a crucial period now in this match for Elverum. Into the final ten minutes of this first half, there's a bit of a gap opening up, up between the two teams. 11-8. PSG's favor, so key for this Elverum side to cut that deficit down. Uh, at the very least, do not allow it to get much bigger than this as we go into the break. So it's Eric Johansson back in at left back. And here he is in the ball. Lays it off to Grundle. Grundle, a bit stuck there in his positioning. So it's Johansson. Moen, Johansson. Lays it off to the wing, not the best pass, and in the end, picked up. Referees give the free throw. So a bit of a let off there for Sindra Heldahl. Did well to keep it in play. After that pass, it was slipped out of his hands, it was just about in play, as you can see there. Grundahl trying to break through, and he does exactly that. Free throw given, as he's taken in the act of shooting. Good save down low by Jan Jonti. Grundahl having a look around again, looking to use the line, lays it off to Johansson. Eric Johansson goes for the far post, rebound picked up in the end, nice move there by Grundahl. Really dove into that and gets a little shove from Konku for his efforts there, and the fans not happy with that. But not a bother. Grundahl lays it off to Heldahl. Moen. Receives it on the switch. Looks to take on Konku. Johansson, hand up for passive play. Grundle, Moen again. And saved at the bottom corner again. And away come PSG on the break with Benoit Konku into the top left-hand corner. 
And uh, an attack which lasted almost two minutes. Comes to nothing in the end. And again, the danger of PSG on the break. Displayed by Benoit Konku away like a flash. And he got a touch on it. Emil Limsgard, he got a touch on it, but not enough to keep it out. Well, they're creating the opportunities here, Elvrum. Just have to be much, much smarter with their shooting. That's much, much better. Uh, Stig Torremoen well, showing what he's capable of. Two from seven in this first half. Not ideal by any means, but you have to give him credit. You have to give the coaching team credit as well for keeping faith. And you can see what he's capable of there. Very quick shooting motion, great jump on him as well. Player with a lot of European experience with Pri Hwanstad in Sweden. And inside on that occasion by Shipshack, so no goal for him. Vidovic in the center looks to break through and uh, enjoy his 15 seconds in attack before he makes his way off. Grundle coming back in. So Elverum managing the pace of the game well since that timeout. Moen. Back to Grundahl, he's broken through. Oh, good save by Jan Jonti. He should have done better than that, and he'll know it as well. Huge gap right through the center. Could have played it into the line, and that almost got in the way of Grundahl with Solstad right there, but he'll be making no excuses for that. And it seems that Jan Jonti has really excelled with shots down to his bottom right. Definitely an area to avoid. If you're an Elvrum shooter at the moment. Grandi, Christopans. Christopans again. Lays it off to Elohim Grandi. He goes low and finds a way through the defense to earn the penalty. You can see that's what he was looking for. Wasn't really interested in the shot. He threw himself into the defense there down low and gets the penalty for his troubles. And once again. Up steps, Camille Zipchak scored one miss one so far from the penalty line. He makes it two from three. And I'm uh, going to have to start retracting my statement about him not being seen in the seven meter line again. It's two nice finishes. It's an unusual sight in general to see line players take penalties. And with Mikkel Hansen no longer in the squad. And unlikely to be seen again this season. His replacement at the moment looks like Camille Shipshack. Grundahl. Johansson lays it back in. Johansson looking for some space to run into, and that's what he can do, and he has it. Just waiting and waiting, and uh, having half an eye on the goal at all times. Christopans, probably the man who should have looked after him there. And Toft Hansen coming out just a little bit too late. And I was saying you don't want to be shooting down to that bottom right hand corner, but it worked the treat on that occasion for Eric Johansson. Elverum back within three here. Into the final four minutes of the half. An attacker foul called against the line player, I think. Kamil Shipshak off the ball. And again, an opportunity to slow things down. What they're going to do here now, Elverum is play a little bit of seven on six. Well, that's risky, very risky at this point in the first half. A couple of empty net goals will be the last thing they want, but a couple of easy goals is, uh, well, that's why they're doing it. Let's see how it works out. Oh, well, it's worked a charm. As long as they get the goalkeeper back, Eric Johansson again. Showing just how much power he has in that big right arm. Part of the Sweden team that won gold at the HF Euro in January. Didn't feature too much, but when he did, you could see just how much power he had. And definitely one for the future for the national team, one for the present for this Elverum side.
Steins goes one way, then the other. Ball into the line was on there, but in the end tries to play the complicated pass out to the wing and it's no good. Chipshack all alone there, but it's easier said than done. And that was a good pass into the line and a great finish. And Elverham back within one. And it's Thomas Solstock. Goal number three for the Norwegian international. Great pass through the legs of Konku. And a composed finish as well. 12-13, just over two minutes left in this half. Game on again. Steins, Brondi back into Steins, drifts out to the left-hand side, Brondi back to Steins again. Ball into the line, slips out of the hands, and away come Elverham on the break. There's an opportunity here, stuck in two minds about what to do. Johansson looks to go alone, held up by two players, and the referees blow the whistle just before Nicholas Fingrain can break through. And it's all happening here at the turning in arena. Fans not happy with that. Referees call the foul just before the breakthrough there. Free throw given to Elvrum and the floor. Be swept up before we get back underway. Here's Elvrum's side showing glimpses of what they were capable of early in the season. Their away victory over Seged, beating the likes of Meshkov Brest. And Zagreb drawing with Vardar. But recently they've been in a bit of a downward trend. Eight losses in a row in this competition. Lucky to bring an end, and what a way to bring an end to that run it would be tonight. But a long way to go still. Johansson, Grundle. Oh, the pass just a bit too high for Moen. There's uh, placing it past the keeper. Never has to put too much power on his shots. He has the power if needed, but so good at just finding the narrow gaps and placing it past the keeper. That's PSG back into a two-goal lead with 40 seconds left in this first half. Ball into the line is a good one again. Solstar makes no mistake. Nice assist by Grundall. One goal game again, Thomas Solstad, four from four. We're right in between two defenders as well. And PSG in the dressing room at halftime will be trying to figure out how they can stop these line players. That's eight goals in total from the pair of Elverham line players. And a timeout now being called by PSG and Raul Gonzalez as he will set the scene for the final 13 seconds of this first half. So not long left in this first half. Just 12 seconds left according to the clock here in the arena. Raul Gonzalez short and sweet with his message. Not much else he can say. He's got 15 minutes to talk to them after this. It's all about this final attack of the first half. PSG looking to take a two-goal lead. He's up as high as three. Brondi. Steins, ball across. Steins again looking for the pass. That's good defending. Brondi from long range. And, well, that's just what he's capable of. What a way to finish the first half. A thunder strike from about 10 meters by Elohim Brondi. A bit of a desperation moment as well as they couldn't find their way through. With Brondi there, anything is possible within about 15 meters, but not able to find the back of the net. Stig Torimoan with two from seven from the right back positions, showing plenty of potential, but not really getting uh, into the positions he wants. And then Eric Johansson with three from six for him in the first half. So there's the potential there. They have just been a bit wasteful in their shooting, and they cannot afford to do that again in the second half against the side who have the rise and the big prize this season. 
and they find themselves in a tricky contest here in the opening game of the playoffs in the HF Champions League. It's Chris O'Reilly with you for the start of this second half, and it's Paris Saint-Germain who get us underway, attacking from left to right on your screens in the royal blue shirts. And the home side, Elverum, backed by 2,500 fans in this packed arena in the white. And a save down low for Imsgard at the start of the second half. Exactly what the doctor ordered for them. Now can they find a way into the back of the net? Uh, not like that, they can't. And it's a bit rushed again, just like we saw at the start of the first half by Stig Torimoen. And he knows he can do it. He's just not uh, able to put it in the back of the net often enough. And, well, all going downhill here as we see uh, two-minute suspension dished out for the challenge on Luke Steins. See two players, the two Swedes, Fingren and Johansson, combining to take him down. And it's Nicholas Fingren, who's the guilty party in the referee's eyes. He's off for the next two minutes. And we get back underway with a free throw. The Steins back up in the center of the attack. Empty switch brings Remy Lee into the center. Karabadish waiting, but ball into Camille Shipshak, who delivers goal number six for him today. Delighted with himself for that. And every right to be the big pole. Really difficult to stop once he gets his hands on the ball. And you can see, well, a bit of a mismatch in the center of that defense. They had him in terms of being in front of or between him and the goal, but they couldn't stop him. And Shipshack with goal number six. So Christopher Hedberg in, in the right wing position, going in as a second line player temporarily. Johansson, nice pass and a chance at the breakthrough here. And there is the first goal of the game for Tobias Grundahl. PSG looking to respond immediately, and they do exactly that through Luke Steins. Nice little one-two between him and Remy Lee. And the defense just didn't get back quick enough. And Remy Lee does everything right there, draws in the defender, and then lays the pass off. Good finish down the other end by Grundahl. Just sneaking that one past the right hip of Jan Jonti, who retains his place in goal. Generally the number two for PSG, it's Vincent Girard, who is the mainstay in goal, but not today. Moen, now to Johansson. Eric Johansson, oh, rides that challenge really well, manages to stay strong and great composure. I think it says a lot about his core strength that he can take the challenge like that, manage to rebalance and get the shot off when being held up like that. I think it was Karabadic. Yes, it was. He was holding him. Did well to beat the keeper. And now Elverum back to full strength with Nicholas Finger and come flying back in. Trying to chop down Remy Lee. Karabadic. Now two Steins. Ball across to Remy Lee into the line and through the hands of the keeper. From Camille Shipshack, another one for Camille. Seven from eight. His only miss today from the penalty line. On oh, a wicked shot, but right at the keeper. And a good save by Anjanti. PSG's ball after a little push on the back there as they were tussling for the rebound. And PSG can slow things down here. Toft Hansen comes off, Shipshack back on in the attack. Got so much power in that arm, but uh, not where he wanted it to go. And well read by the keeper. Shipshack on the move, creates space for himself. And well, three in quick succession in this second half for Camille Shipshack. He's really the difference between the sides here. Eight goals now. And really quick off his line there. We'll see it again, just appears out of nowhere. Eric Johansson trying to track him, but as soon as he got a bit of space, there was no stopping him. Difficult enough to stop him when he's standing right in front of you. Never mind when he's got half a meter of space between you. Grundahl, Moen, 
Right into the hands of the keeper. Jeanty lays it off. Nice catch by him. And it's Luke Steins goes all the way through and wins a free throw. Well covered in the fence. There was a shared effort there between Hedberg and Johansson. Luke Stein so, so dangerous. As soon as he gets his head up, you know he wants to go towards the goal. And uh, more often than not, he finds a way through. Lays it off for Rami Lee. Karabadic into the center. Looking for the line again. And once again, Kamil Shipjak, well, he's making it look easy. It was all about the line players for Elverham in the first half. In the second half, it's all about the line player for Paris Saint-Germain, Camille Shipshank. Moen lays it off and Grandol comes back in. And really, when you're facing Nikola Karabatic at this point in his career, you know he's more likely than not going to try and find a way to the line in a situation like that. Polite applause from the bench as well. Here goes Grundle. Oh, it's stolen. Just out of the reach, though, of Nikola Karabatic. Showing he has got that burst of speed in him still. So Elverham retained possession, but they're in real danger here. Five goals down for the first time today. They need to start scoring. Good movement, but the pass is to nobody in the end and a chance to break again. Steins takes it over the halfway line, looks into the line. That's a good save down low by Emil Emsgaard. Emsgaard needed that, Elverham needed that, and they need a lot more than that. Hence the timeout. Timeout number two for Bergelund. It's getting to that point now for Elverham that the make or break for them will be in the attack. The defense has been doing okay, but it's really these failed attacks and the counter attacks from PSG that are coming from it. And that's a real danger for them, and that is generally the case. And there's a bit of a gulf in level between the sides. But we've seen in the first half that they're capable of going on runs of their own and cutting down the deficit. Let's see what they can do here. Drundal. Plays it off to Moen. Pass to Johansson. He's got space, but saved again and caught again by Jean T. Steins out to the left hand side. Overlap on the wing. And it's saved again. He bails them out once more. Emil Imsgaard. Drundal plays it across. A bit of a risky one. And it's a good finish out in the left wing. I think for the first time today. Sindra Heldahl has got an opportunity out of that left wing. Really, it's been all about the backcourt. He's had to be patient. He had to stay composed, and that's exactly what he did there. Sindra Heldahl with a good finish. And Elverham back within four now. Garabadic looks to go through, and well, just sneaks that one past the keeper's shoulder. I was saying before that you have to be wary about what he's going to do when he's facing you. And if you don't go in all in on him, he can also punish you like he did there. That's a good save. And for the first time today, or well, the second time today, rather, Andre Longos has been denied by Jean T. It's a rare thing. And a very good first half, but well read by Jan Jean T on that occasion. And a chance for PSG to set things up and attack now. They can start controlling the pace. Ball out to Grabiel on the left wing. Empty switch. Brings Karabadic into the center, but he's not needed on that occasion. Shot by Remili is blocked and then saved. Dingren 
Now to Grundahl, tries to beat his man, ends up keeping the ball moving, smart play. Let the ball do the talking here, let the ball do the moving. Seems to be the best approach for Overham at the moment. Eric Johnson comes back in, has a word with Tobias Grundahl. He'll go into the center momentarily, then make his way on the empty switch. Grundahl, Moen, and saved again by Sean Tees, really getting to grips with these shots now. Reading them very nicely, Jan Jonti. Steins to Karabadic, lobbed and kept out by Emil Imsgaard. Good save, he'll be delighted with himself there and a chance on the break here and it's put away this time by Andre Longos. Goal number five, and Elvrum starting to find their way back into this contest now. There's a few moments of danger for them. But their own keeper, Emil Imsgaard, managing to get a few important saves off. And Elverham finding their way in attack as well. Remy Lee takes on the defence. Ball across to Steins. That comes off the defender. And out over the sideline. PSG still in possession. Karabadic looking for the line, he finds the line, Shipshack again, and this time it's saved. And the referees, at least one of them, calls for the penalty. The other one was already making his way down the other end of the court. Let's look at that one again. Looked like there was a lot of contact there. He does let go and allows the shot, but the referees had their mind made up and the penalty given. So Shipshack off penalty duties after winning that one. On comes Ferran Soleil. And he makes no mistake. Soleil has come in in the right wing in the second half. Did score one in the first half when he was a momentary replacement for Kongu. This time, scoring from the penalty line. PSG back up by five. Line switch as Borgelund, the coach, was asking for in the timeout. Bit of a high pass there, but collected by Grundle. He draws the foul. And Elverum will be happy to dictate the pace a little bit here. Not force things too early, not take on shots too early, but trying to create good opportunities and maybe force the passive play hand a few times. That's great movement again. Really good connection between Moen and Andre Longos. Goal number six for him. And really, the two line players having a stormer today for Elverum. Four goals for Solsta, six for Longos. And that one, no doubt about it, top bins for Andre Longos. You can see there the three of the top scorers, all line players. You don't see that every day. Both sides in defence, really wary of the other's attacking threat in the backcourt. And maybe overcompensating a little bit. But you have to give credit to the two attacking backcourt lineups as well. Particularly on Elverham's side. They haven't been flustered by this defence, which can be very difficult to deal with, particularly for Grundahl today. It's a challenge for him, but he's really stepping up to it, as is Johansson. Another ball into the line, that'll be a penalty. Good call from the referees, easy one as well. And they swap in Thomas Solstad on the line, and that immediately provides a result as well. Good pass in by Johansson. And Solstad picks up where Longos left off. And a penalty for Elverum. I think it's the first one today for them to be taken by Tobias Grundl. And oh, he bounces that one off the crossbar, picks up the rebound himself. Can he find a way through? Oh, he flicks it over the head of the keeper. Well, that was beautiful in the end and really nice composure by Tobias Grundl to react first of all, manage to grab the rebound and on the way down there just flick that shot over the head of the keeper. Brilliant stuff overall. I'll forgive the fact that he may have had a foot inside as he did it.
Yeah. Ah, who cares? Nice movement. And a chance here for Elvron to break again. As that pass into the line slips out of the hands of Shipshack. Grundahl again to Fingren. Lays it off to Moen. Moen looking for the line. And he had the space in the center there, but he was out of steps. He couldn't bounce it again as well. So a really nice response here from Elverum to go back within three goals, and they cut the deficit further. With just over 16 minutes left in this contest, they have an opportunity. Line switch, it's all stop. Grundahl to Johansson, back to Grundahl, into the line, picked up by Solstan, and that's it. Two-goal game, Elverum 20, PSG 22. Now just when it looked like PSG were taking full control of this game, Elverum find a way to claw their way back into the contest. And another... Well judged pass, and Thomas Solstad, five from five from the line, six for his line player teammate. I keep emphasizing it, but it is phenomenal. This time the shot from Shipshack blocked by the defense. He was saying there was some inside defending there. Four and a half minutes, as you can see, since PSG's last goal. That is a rarity, and Camille Shipshack getting a bit frustrated there, and the referees having a word with him. Telling him to calm down and let them do the referee. Elverum fans looking to get stuck in as well here. Behind me to my right. More boisterous of the fans, but they're all getting involved here today. But nothing they can do about Luke Steins on that occasion. He dances through again. Goal number five for him from five. Moen, well shepherded by the defense. And smartly decides to make way. So he gets a break. Well, the, uh, change in the approach in the back back court with Josip Vidovic coming in for the first time really today in attack he played in defense in the first half had a couple of seconds in attack but his first settled attack for the team and he's in the right back position so it's Johansson on the left looks to cut inside finds the line again and frustration for Raul Gonzalez and the PSG bends but it's another goal for Thomas Solsta Six from six, well, how about that? Nice movement again, but the amount of times they've been caught out, this PSG defense, and future opponents will be watching this and licking their lips. And at the moment, they can't even think about future opponents. The one facing them right now is giving them a lot to deal with. And Camille Shipshack bails them out there. Good pass inside by Christophans. Finger in. Vidovic, Fingren again, he breaks through, and the shot saved, free throw given. Top scorer in this game for PSG, and overall, Camille Shipshack. Ten goals on the night, eight of them from open play, two from the penalty line. And it looks like it's going to be a Shake up as well with the club captain Luka Karabatic coming in for the first time for PSG, but it's Elverum in the attack at the moment with Grundahl. He's pushed down, lays it off. Referees say play on. They also say passive play on the way. The hand is up. Johansson tries to find a way through. He does exactly that and earns the penalty inside defending by Danis Kristapans. And nice movement overall by the Swede. Ducks inside. Draws the foul and lets the shot go as well. So although Grundahl scored on the rebound from his last miss penalty, he doesn't get to take it this time. It's Sindra Heldahl who steps up. He's had a quiet game overall, the left wing. Scored one from open play. An opportunity now from the seven meter line against Jan Gentil. Heldahl fakes it once and places that one into the bottom left hand corner to make it a two-goal game again. Alvarum keep knocking on the door. Very calm and composed finish. In the end, and Jean T left a bit stranded. He's had a good game in this second half, Jan Jean T. And nothing he could do there. 
Christophans. Ball to Steins. Christophans almost lets it slip. Lays it off to Prondi, into the line, spills out of the hands, and no chance to break here. Ball over the top, but it's stolen back by Eloine Prondi. Good effort there, but it could have been smarter. From an Elverham perspective, there was a flood of players in white jerseys making their way over the halfway line. Maybe four or five options there, but the ball tossed in a bit of a Hail Mary style. And in the end, PSG in possession again. Grondi makes his way out on the left, and too many steps taken by the uh, according to the referees. Grondol, Fingren, Vidovic looks to take on the defence with the spin. Oh, good move and foul given just before he can take the shot, which goes over the top anyway. But you know, Sibidovic showing what he's capable of. Nice move there. Elbrum, back within two, an opportunity to cut the deficit even further. And that'll really give PSG something to think about here for the final 11 minutes of the contest. Grundahl out to Vidovic. Movement on the line again from Solsta. Crucial part of their game so far today. Johansson out to Grundahl again. And one referee says that uh, it was too many steps. Or a double dribble, the other referee saying there was a foul. And it's the court referee in the end who said it was a foul. He gets the overriding choice. So it's Elvrum still in possession and a little bit of a warning as well to Karabatic for a high hand. Vidovic tries to find the line, he does! And into the bottom right hand corner, one goal game. Thomas Solsta again. Goal number seven for him. And it's all about the line players today, and uh, something's happened off the ball. Unfortunately, I didn't see what happened at first glance. Hopefully, the replay will enlighten us, but Tobias Grundle and Andre Longos down on the ground. And uh, you could see there it was uh, Ferran Sole who comes crashing into him. Looking like a bit of an attacker foul, but off the ball, something you don't see too often. The referee's trying to just get everyone calm again. A little high five between Grundahl and Sole. All smiles now, so everyone's okay. And it looks like PSG will hold on to possession. But they found themselves in a real contest here. I'm sure they were expecting nothing less. Elverham over the years have shown what they're capable of. At home, they've pulled off big victories over the years. They've even beaten Montpellier back in the old Group CD days. But a victory here in what they have described themselves as the biggest game of their history would be massive. Prondi not looking to give them anything easily, though. He goes down under pressure. And Sindra Heldahl gets up on his feet and tries to incite the crowd here. Save down low and a chance for Elverum on the break. That's a beautiful pass out to the left-hand side to Tobias Grundahl. He puts it past the keeper. And after 50 minutes of this contest, Elverum are back level. 24-24. Here we go. And the turning in arena back up on their feet. And again, it's a bit of a dry spell. A barren spell and attack for PSG. Over four minutes since their last goal. Steins lays it into the line, and oh, just snuck past the keeper. Camille Shipshack delivers yet again. Goal number 11 for him. What a performance. And I tell you what, player of the match is going to go to one of the line players today. Hard to know which one right now, to be honest. Three of them could deserve it. The PSG take the lead again. Nine minutes left to play here in this first leg of the playoff round in the EHF Champions League. We're into the top 12 teams in Europe right now. Uh, that one almost stolen, picked up again by Vidovic. Johansson leading for calm in the attack. Solstad moving off the ball on the line. 
And the ball goes into him again, and it's in the back of the net again, and you have to give full credit there to Tobias Grundahl. He had a little word with Thomas Solstad, told him, this is what I'm going to do, and he delivered. Again and again and again, Elverum have unlocked this PSG defense, and I'm fascinated to hear what they plan for this, because whatever they plan has worked to perfection after 52 minutes. Still eight to go, though. And Luke Steins trying to wriggle his way through. He's keeping a calm head here. Shipshot keeping a calm head here, looking to deliver. Christopans needs to deliver, but that pass is no good. It slips out of the hands of Shipshack. Elverum with a chance to break there, but they decide to hold on to the ball. You know why? Because they have a chance to take the lead here. There's a the previous goal. Nice ball inside over and over again. And the line players have delivered over and over again. And some of the fans in here can't bear the tension. They'll be so, so proud of what these players have done so far, but it won't be the same unless they can deliver a result in the end. And Vidovic comes crashing into the center of defense there, earns himself a free throw. Johansson, empty switch. Vidovic looking to go again, in flight pass, and it's saved, oh! Gentil spoils the party. A chance for PSG to take the lead, and it's a penalty down the other end from potential Jubilee and Elation. And a great move there to disappointment. And as PSG earned the penalty, and that's Camille Shipshack. He steps up yet again, looking for goal number 12 tonight against Imsgard. And he finds a way through his arms to make it 26-25. Gives him a little bit of a haircut there. Goal number 12 from Shipshack. Phenomenal stuff. So Stig Toramoen, the left-hander back in the right-back position. He's been hit and miss today, to put it lightly. And he's got a shot in him, as does this man. Grundahl, oh, well, he's got a shot in him as well. He draws level again, 26-26. We haven't seen that tonight. Tobias Grundahl letting one rip from outside. Steins tries to find a way through, but he lets it slip, and a chance for Elverham to break here. Grundahl wants the ball in his hands. He's getting the crowd going. He knows what this means. Look at that again. I think he caught everyone off guard there including Jean T, who was in the right position, but then it slip off that right hip and into the back of the net. The entire arena here getting onto their feet. There's still over five minutes left to go. Moen to Johansson. Oh, Eric Johansson! That's one rip, a thunderstrike from downtown, and Elverham in the lead, folks. 27-26. Five goals down early in this second half. What a turnaround from the men in white. And John T tried to catch it whole as he does so often. Not this time. Condi, Christopans runs into the defender. No attacking foul. Chance here on the right hand side. And Luke Steins delivers. The draw level. Imsgard giving him just a little bit too much space there. Tried to cover the near post. And it's all square. Solstad on the wraparound. Grundahl, Moen, Johansson. Johansson to Moen again. Tries to find a teammate. Not fancying the shot there, not looking to make something happen out of nothing. Maybe needed at some point, though. Solstad happy to go on the wraparound again. He told to go back in on the line. Grundahl 
goes into the attack in the center. Johansson has space here and he spins it past the keeper. Eric Johansson with a gorgeous finish gives Elverum the lead again. Ball out to the right hand side and the other end. Immediate response by Ferran Sole and we're level again. Three and a half minutes left on the clock. Somebody give us a timeout here. We need a chance. to catch our breath here and give me a chance to write down who the player of the match is. Goodness me, Johansson, what a finish. Great composure. Grundle in the center, he's played every single second in the attack for this team, lays it off to Moen. Gets a bit stuck there, they'll have to reset. Grundall, he's found a way through, saved by Chanty, picked up. And away come PSG on the break with Elohim Prandi. He tries to go alone, he does exactly that. And he gives PSG the lead. 29-28. Two and a half minutes left on the clock here. That was a great move, but just couldn't find the finish. And there is the timeout for Burgerlund and Elvrum. Let's listen in to what he has to say. Well, the last throw of the dice from Elvrum's perspective. That will be their last time out of the game. Had an opportunity there to take the lead. And as are the fine, fine margins at this level. That opportunity was missed. And then the other end, Elohim Prandi gave PSG the lead. But a chance now for the home side to draw level with Grundall. Lays it off, and in comes Johansson into the center. Very aggressive defense here from PSG as Toft Hansen tries to stop any flow in the attack before it even gets started. Just over two minutes left on the clock. PSG still with a timeout left to play if they need it. Grundahl into the line again, of course, and it's put away again, of course. We're all level, 29-29. Thomas Solstad, goal number nine. What a performance. What an incredible, incredible performance. And still, just over 90 seconds left to deliver here for both sides. Steins, out to Chris Debans, it's stolen. Oh, comes off the foot. And they almost couldn't believe their luck. And Solstad is down now. It looks like he's hurt himself. The referees haven't noticed yet. And finally they have. And hopefully... It's nothing too serious. He's gone down heavily there as he tried to reach for the ball. Like it might be his ankle. Don't want to speculate at this point. That's the last thing they would have wanted at this point in the game. And looked like they were so close to claiming the ball there and going on the break. And next thing you know, Thomas Allstad is down and looking in a lot of discomfort here. He's going to be helped up, which is a good sign. And Lovely to see there, Kamil Shipchak and Tobias Grundahl helping him off. 
Out over to the sideline. What an amazing performance from him today and what a terrible way to finish what has been a fantastic output. Nine goals from nine shots for him. And hopefully it's nothing too serious. Looking in discomfort, but not too bad at the moment. And now attention, turned back to the court. One minute 15 left on the clock here. It's the first leg of the playoffs, but it feels like the final. Christophans lays it off to Steins, and Luke Steins again. Given too much space in that right-hand side, gives PSG the lead, brings up the 30-goal mark. Still time here for Elvrum to draw a level. 40 seconds left on the clock. Heldahl comes in from the left wing to help out. A very aggressive defense again from PSG, but that'll open up space. Grundahl, Jinx inside, doesn't fancy it. They keep the ball moving here. Chance on the right-hand side, perhaps just a free throw given. 25 seconds left on the clock. Eighteen seconds left. Chip Shack on the sideline saying hands up. Hand is up for passive play. Ball across. It spills back into Grundahl's hands. He tries to find a way through. It's going to be a free throw. Five seconds left. Shot has to come in here from Johansson. Oh, yes! An equalizer at the buzzer at the very, very death by Eric Johansson. Draws Elverham level, and that is no less than they deserve in this incredibly compelling contest.